Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. AMD just announced new Zen 5 desktop processors, new motherboard chipsets to support them, additional details on the AM5 socket, and new mobile chips with a heavy dose of AI. We've been briefed on all the info ahead of time, so when I filmed this, I was still here in Australia, but right now I'll be over in Taiwan for Computex. Anyway, let's get into the details after a quick word from our Computex sponsor. The Harbour Unboxed Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's all new gaming slim graphics cards. They're thinner and lighter, allowing for hassle-free compatibility and installation, while still delivering award-winning performance that MSI is known for. Included is the latest Trifrosa 3 cooler in either black or white using Torx 5.0 fans, a nickel-plated copper base plate with up to 8 core pipes to ensure optimal heat dissipation and ultra-quiet operation. Enjoy ray tracing and DLSS 3 with NVIDIA's ADA architecture and tap into elite-level system responsiveness through Reflex, giving you the competitive edge where it matters in-game. Learn more about the all-new MSI GeForce RTX 40 series gaming slim graphics cards via links in the description. Also, supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their new CryoSheet, a high-performance graphene thermal pad that contains no liquid and therefore isn't subject to the kind of degradation seen with traditional thermal pastes, such as drying out, for example. It offers outstanding thermal connectivity, simple installation, and extreme longevity. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. AMD's major announcements from today are new Ryzen 9000 desktop processors with confirmation that AMD are indeed jumping from the 7000 series with Zen 4 straight up to the 9000 series for Zen 5. These CPUs, codenamed Granite Ridge, are of course Socket AM5 compatible, supporting DDR5 and PCIe 5.0 technologies. While AMD hasn't done a deep dive just yet on the Zen 5 architecture these new CPUs use, AMD made clear in their briefing that this is a major overhaul to their core design, describing it as a sweeping update in contrast to some previous architectures that were more iterative. Zen 5 includes significant improvements to branch prediction, wider pipelines, and deeper window sizes, with AMD claiming up to twice the instruction bandwidth, twice the data bandwidth, and twice the AVX512 throughput relative to Zen 4. This translates into a 16% claimed IPC improvement for Zen 5 versus Zen 4 using a Geomean. This includes gains of 17% and 23% respectively in common benchmarks like Cinebench and Blender, though there will be outliers on either side. On the low end, AMD are quoting 10% gains, but for specific workloads that harness certain aspects to the new architecture, such as AVX512, those improvements could be much more substantial. There's been a lot of speculation around Zen 5's IPC figures lately. I've seen anything from a 5% gain to some pretty outrageous rumours of over 30%, so it's good to finally get some confirmation here. This is a pretty typical IPC gain compared to AMD's previous architectures. Zen 4 versus Zen 3 was a 13% uplift, Zen 3 versus Zen 2 a 19% uplift, and Zen 2 was around the 15% mark over Zen 1 and Zen Plus. And those are all AMD's quoted numbers from their presentations at the time. Provided these claims from AMD are accurate, this is a very consistent pace of execution with each major Zen architecture. However, the total performance improvement from Zen 5 will be limited by clock speeds. This new generation isn't providing significant increases in frequency based on listed specifications for each part, and core counts are identical to the Zen 4 generation. The flagship Ryzen 9 9950X is shown with a 5.7 GHz boost clock, the same as the Ryzen 9 7950X, though we don't know how all core clocks will fare. This suggests the majority of the performance gains will be down to IPC and architectural changes. In comparison, AMD was able to achieve a 16% frequency increase with their Zen 4 flagship compared to Zen 3, which helped raise overall performance. I suspect that in a typical workload, this will make Zen 5 a smaller gain over its predecessor than Zen 4 achieved. This should be more of a Zen 3 versus Zen 2 improvement. That generation did not see a significant clock speed increase, but did benefit from a large IPC gain. Part of this is down to AMD using a very similar node for Zen 5 as Zen 4. AMD said these parts are built on TSMC 4 nanometer technology, which is what was used for Ryzen 8000 APUs. Ryzen 7000 CPUs with Zen 4 used TSMC's N5 node, and both 5nm and 4nm nodes are part of the same family. 
The full Ryzen 9000 lineup includes all the models that you would expect at launch. There's a 16-core Ryzen 9 9950X, a 12-core Ryzen 9 9900X, an 8-core Ryzen 9 9700X, and a 6-core Ryzen 5 9600X. We don't have pricing for these parts yet, but they will be launched in July of 2024, which is not too far away now. All include SMT and similar cache capacities to Zen 4. So the 9700X, for example, has 32 meg of L3 and 8 meg of L2 for a total of 40 megabytes in cache. The 8-core and 6-core models see a 100 MHz frequency increase over their Ryzen 7000 counterparts, while the higher core count models see no frequency gain in terms of max boost. The 8-core and 6-core models see a 100 MHz frequency increase over their Ryzen 7000 counterparts, while the higher core count models see no frequency gain in terms of max boost. What has been updated though are the TDPs, which isn't a great indication of actual power consumption, but does give some idea of how Zen 5 is stacking up relative to previous models. The flagship 9950X remains as a 170 watt part, but the 9900X drops to 120 watts, down from 170 watts previously. The 9700X and 9600X also now become just 65 watt processors instead of 105 watts previously with the 7700X and 7600X. This puts their TDPs much more in line with the non-X models, where both the 7700 and 7600 were 65 watt parts. AMD aren't making a ton of performance claims today, but did show some comparisons pitting the 9950X up against the Intel Core i9-14900K. For productivity workloads, AMD are claiming notably better performance, such as a 21% gain in Cinebench R24 and a 56% gain in Blender. Our previous benchmarking had the 14900K and Ryzen 9 7950X neck and neck in most productivity workloads, or in some cases the 14900K was ahead, like in Photoshop. AMD are suggesting the 9950X should put them into a clearly superior position, although this is just a comparison to 14th gen. We are expecting new Arrow Lake processors from Intel in the fourth quarter of the year. Similarly, AMD are claiming a 13% average performance improvement across six games for the 9950X versus 14900K. Our previous benchmarks using an RTX 4090 at 1080p had the 14900K 10% ahead of the 7950X while losing to the 7800X 3D. We had the 3D Vcash model coming in around 5% ahead based on a 21 game sample. This would imply that Zen 5 non-X3D models should deliver gaming performance around that of the Zen 4 X3D parts, although AMD has tested using a Radeon RX 7900 XTX, with both platforms set to use DDR5 6000 memory. In our game benchmarks, we typically pair the 14900K with DDR5 7200 CL34 memory, as it supports higher memory frequencies, which improves gaming performance by a few percent. It's also not fully clear what power profile AMD used for the 14900K on the MSI motherboard they were using. They list the Intel default, but this could mean anything these days. Basically, what I'm saying here is that while these numbers can give some indication, they should firstly be taken with a grain of salt, as they are likely cherry-picked, and secondly, taken with even more grains of salt due to the way they have been tested. Hopefully, though, we do see Zen 5 coming out of the gate with highly competitive results. It should also be noted here that there are no X3D models being announced for the initial release of Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 CPUs, so like with previous generations, we're expecting that those models will be launched and released, even announced at some later date, but yeah, no discussion of the 3D Vcash Zen 5 models right here at Computex. As for the AM5 platform, there's good news to share with AMD extending their confirmed lifespan for AM5 through to 2027 and beyond. Previously, AMD have only stated support up to 2025 plus. That's been extended by at least two years, giving prospective buyers and current AM5 owners more clarity around the future of the platform. However, we do need to be somewhat cautious about specifically what AMD is claiming here. While they are claiming support until 2027 plus, they have not specifically confirmed support for the next CPU architecture beyond Zen 5, which we presume is Zen 6. The reason to be cautious here is AMD in this very same slide say that AM4 is continuing to be supported today and into 2025, despite there being no new CPU architecture launches on the platform since 2020 or 2021 if you want to count the Vcash models. 
So the least charitable interpretation of this slide would be that AM5 will be supported to 2027 plus just with refreshed Zen 5 CPU launches instead of new Zen 6 models. With that said, in my opinion, the way most people would interpret this and the way AMD would want you to interpret this is that at minimum Zen 6 will be supported on the AM5 platform. Marketing the platform in this way strongly implies this and the implication is stronger now that support has extended to 2027. Anything short of Zen 6 on AM5 now would be highly misleading given it will almost certainly launch before 2027, so I fully expect Zen 6 to be supported on AM5, and I believe that the way that AMD has gone about this presentation is to tell you that Zen 6 will be supported without actually announcing Zen 6 because the focus here is on Zen 5. Alongside increased commitment to the AM5 platform, AMD are announcing new 800 series chipsets X870 and X870E, with AMD deciding to skip the 700 series. Relative to X670 and X670E, these new chipsets bring three key advantages. USB 4 support as standard across all motherboards, PCIe 5.0 for both graphics and NVMe storage as standard across all motherboards, and increased memory frequency support through Expo. This makes X870 more of an iterative update on X670, though it should raise the minimum capabilities of an X-series board compared to the initial batch of X670 boards. As some examples, the Gigabyte X670 Gaming X and Asus Prime X670P are around $200 US, but only include support for PCIe 5.0 in the first M.2 slot, with PCIe 4.0 support maximum for the primary x16 graphics slot. X870 versions of these boards would have to support PCIe 5.0 for both the primary M.2 and Time16 slots, as well as integrating USB 4. Interestingly, as part of their briefing, AMD hinted that PCIe 5.0 GPUs are coming soon, which is perhaps a reference to the capabilities of RDNA 4, which is rumoured to use PCIe 5.0. X870 and X870E boards are of course backwards compatible with Ryzen 7000 and Ryzen 8000 CPUs based on Zen 4, though they will also support Ryzen 9000 out of the box. Similarly, existing 600 series boards are forwards compatible with Zen 5, so after a BIOS update, you should be able to drop in a new 9000 series CPU and have it work just fine. We're also going to have to wait and see what higher Expo memory clock support actually means. All of AMD's performance data for Ryzen 9000 was captured on an X670E board at DDR5 6000, and there was no mention of Zen 5 actually supporting faster memory. It's possible that it does, we just don't know to what level, whether that memory support will also be possible on X670 boards, or whether these updates to X870 are largely for future proofing. Expect to see more on X870 as we head to the Computex show floor in the next few days. As for additional updates, AMD are launching the Ryzen 9 5900XT and Ryzen 7 5800XT on AM4 in July as well. The 5800XT is a 100MHz overclock of the 5800X, while the 5900XT appears to be a 100MHz downclocked version of the Ryzen 9 5950X. The second half of AMD's presentation largely focused on mobile parts, which we don't really cover at Hardware Unboxed. Key features include an upgrade to Zen 5 CPU cores, RDNA 3.5 graphics, and a new NPU with 50 tops of performance, meeting the minimum requirements for Microsoft's new Copilot Plus feature. Some of the interesting things here are the 12-core design in the flagship model up from 8 cores with their previous monolithic APUs. This is split into 4 Zen 5 cores and 8 Zen 5C cores. The integrated graphics gets bumped up to 16 compute units up from 12, and these will be available in laptops from various OEMs beginning in July. Of course, what we're seeing here is AMD's Strix Point design, not the heavily rumoured Strix Halo APU, which is said to increase the CPU design up to 16 cores and the GPU up to a massive 40 compute units. As far as this briefing is concerned, AMD's focus at Computex is on Strix Point and the new AI capabilities it brings, because of course there has to be mention of AI. Speaking of AI, these new mobile parts have indeed been renamed to the Ryzen AI 300 series, completely ditching the Ryzen 9000 type branding that they otherwise would have used. This means AMD directly moves from Ryzen 8000 APUs to Ryzen AI 300. Yep, makes a heap of sense. They're even calling this the third generation of AI CPUs from AMD. Don't even really know what that means. Anyway, this includes the Ryzen AI 9 HX 370 and Ryzen AI 9 365, which 
are honestly quite bad names that somehow make Ryzen 9 8940HS feel like less of a mouthful, a truly impressive feat given the shocking nature of mobile part naming. Now to be fair to AMD, they claim this naming makes more sense. They're going to put the HX on the stickers that you see on laptops and those sorts of things instead of it being at the end of the product name. I'm not convinced. I think it is still a bit of a mouthful. It's also pretty clear that AMD has gone with this naming scheme to directly counter Intel's upcoming Lunar Lake naming scheme, which is expected to be the Core Ultra 200 series. You see, 300 is better than 200, therefore AMD better. Oh, and AMD is putting AI in the name, so yeah, doubly better. This is the sort of follower behavior that AMD seems to love with some product lines, like with their Radeon GPUs, that try and come as close to matching NVIDIA's GeForce GPUs on price as they can, while being very slightly cheaper, though usually not by enough. Personally, I don't think following the competition in this way is a clear path to success. AMD should be trying to forge their own path and put themselves into a leader position, which is exactly what they are doing with Ryzen desktop parts. Clearly, AMD doesn't care for those CPUs that Intel are likely to go with the Core Ultra 200 brand for Arrow Lake desktop parts. They're sticking with Ryzen 9000 and showing leadership in that market changing the naming of the mobile scheme to follow Intel, but also increasing the number from 200 to 300. I don't know, it's pretty uninspiring stuff. If interested, AMD is claiming better performance for the Ryzen 9 AI HX370 than the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite, Apple M3, and Intel Core Ultra 185H. As for the Radeon side of AMD's business, we didn't hear anything significantly new in our Computex pre-briefing. RDNA 4 was not announced or shown off or even teased, although who knows, maybe it was mentioned in the actual Computex keynote, which just concluded. This isn't hugely surprising, considering the focus is on Zen 5 and new AI capabilities, which is all the rage these days, and we're not expecting RDNA 4 to launch until later this year. Still, a bit disappointing for those that wanted to hear about next-gen graphics. The only Radeon announcement was the Radeon Pro W7900 dual slot, which is just a new variant of their workstation W7900 card that's more compact and a bit cheaper. So that's it for AMD's Zen 5 announcement at Computex 2024. Very exciting to get confirmed details on next-gen Ryzen CPUs after what's felt like months and months of rumours. Plus Steve is super keen to start reviewing them in July, which isn't too far away. There's plenty more to check out at the show, and we'll have some hands-on time with X870 motherboards in the next few days, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, as I said, that's it for this video. If you do appreciate our content here at Hardware Unboxed, please do consider subscribing to see all of our Computex coverage and supporting us directly through our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Yeah, that's it. Well, I'll be flying off to Taiwan in just a moment, so we got this in just before we ended up leaving, so that's nice. And yeah, that's it for this one. I'll catch you in the next one.